Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. If you're a subscriber, welcome back. And if this is your first time viewing, uh, consider subscribing because we put out new videos pretty often and we'll be covering all kinds of fun topics from here on out. So a lot of people have known um, through the summer that I've had this Bushwhacker 10 HD tore apart, uh, doing a galley renovation and all sorts of mods from front to rear basically. And um, I got kind of quiet there towards the end because I was just so busy trying to get things wrapped up before we took our first trip. That people have been reaching out to me and asking me, you know, if I got it done, how's it looking? And so we're done. We took it on our first trip. Uh, we spent a week in northern Michigan with it. Uh, just had a ball, survived some wild weather, uh, cooked some good meals in the in the galley. Uh, just just really enjoyed, you know, the whole thing. You know, it uh, it was a good time. So um, we're home now. Finally got uh, things dried out and cleaned up. So we're ready to reveal what we did in the galley. Uh, before I do, I just want to say it's nothing too fancy. Um, I'm gonna put a link in the description to a video that uh, Brian Smith did on DIY Outdoor Life, uh, where he did a review of uh, uh, an owner down in Texas, uh, Michael Potash, and his galley is like the next level. I mean, it's top of the scale. So that's what probably all of them are compared to is Michael's. But um, I just tried to keep it as simple as I could, but yet get everything in it that I wanted. Uh, just give a little backdrop uh, here on, I saw my first teardrop camper in 1992 when I was, uh, teaching people how to fly. And one of my students had built a teardrop from a Harbor Freight trailer that you could buy on sale for $149 back then. And he had me out to see it. And, and I grew up reading old issues of popular mechanics and you know popular science magazines. And, and they always made a big deal out of teardrops and, and those. So I, I was familiar with the idea, but never seen one. So in 1992, I went and saw this first teardrop and he raised the galley lid in the back and it had a camp chef stove with an oven in that galley. And ever since that day, in my mind, every teardrop has needed that Camp Chef stove. So I almost think we bought this teardrop just so I could buy that stove. And so I got the teardrop, we, we bought, bought the stove, and I went to work trying to weasel that stove into that galley. And it was a very tight fit. And you're gonna see that it does fit in the, in the galley now and, and it's working. And in fact, if you could smell through this video, we've got a chicken in the oven right now I think Wilson's going wild because he's smelling it. My stomach's ground because I'm smelling it. So as soon as we get this video done, we're eating. But uh, come on around back here and we'll take a look at what we've got. So we got the oven on a pullout and it's running right now. We've got the chicken in the oven. Um, it is just done. It's just on warm right now. So when we started out, it was just a standard bushwhacker layout. You had the, the short countertop over here with the, the sink and then a, a fire king stove here in the corner. And then underneath that was a huge uh, furnace that heated the inside of the cabin. And I wanted a full width countertop because when you're back here cooking, you need all the room that you can get. So, you know, I essentially gutted it, took it all down to the studs, redid a lot of the wiring layout, and then started building it back. And this was the, the whole linchpin to the deal was getting this stove to fit. And it slides in and out on the rollers. Um, so it goes in like that. I always have it out when I'm using it because of the heat buildup, but it pulls out easily. I set it up so that my gas line kind of self recoils back in with a service loop inside. And I still have room for storage underneath my slider. Um, it was so tight that I couldn't give up enough room to use like a plywood bottom to the slider. So it's got a piece of eighth inch plate steel. And then this, this oven is actually sitting on the plate steel. And I matched the vent holes in the bottom of the oven underneath through the, the plate so that the oven can actually draw air up underneath. Because on ours, um, you know, I, I know some others have installed the stove as well, and they've had a lot more room to work with, I think, than what I did because it was just so tight to get this to fit, but it fits, the lid shuts, everything there works great. Um, I bought the optional um, griddle that goes with it and it's actually there on the bottom now, but the drawer, the slider goes in. So I've got that storage underneath there as well, just trying to make use of, of all the space that I could. And that that's worked out great. It did make the countertop wind up a little bit tall, but I'm six one and this actually works out really well for me. I, I don't have to bend over anything to work on the countertop. And then this is my first experience with a 12 volt refrigerator and I'm hooked. The, um, our sailboat, I think is going to wind up with one of these refrigerators in it over the winter because we use this for, you know, six days straight 
Um, it kept all our food. We didn't have to mix our food with our drinks in our cooler. So we just put all the food back here in this and it just did a, a phenomenal job. I've got it on a pull out as well. And I did that so that I could access the lid uh, to the, the refrigerator, which is empty now. <clears throat> but it also allowed me, and it's on a piece of eighth inch plate steel as well. Um, it allowed me extra room in the back for my cookware. So I've got my plates, my skillet, my nesting cookware, my, my uh, coffee pot back here. These are really neat. Um, I do a lot of muffins for breakfast, but I didn't want to give up the room for a, a muffin pan. So what I did was I took a muffin pan and cut it apart to get six individual muffin cups that stack. And believe me, I have a whole new respect for whoever made that muffin pan because cutting that sucker apart was quite the chore. So, but they stack neatly now, don't take up hardly any space. They rode a thousand miles just like that and never moved. So I've got a space back here that it's kind of wound up. Um, what I needed to do was leave a dead airspace back here in the back because the refrigerator vents out this back. There's a small cooling fan inside. So I needed that area open. So I had this little space blocked in there and I, I just went ahead and boxed it in like that. And, and Cindy's sister took it away and she's like, well, that's like the perfect size for Reynolds wrap. And I was like, grab me a box. So sure enough, you know, I got saran wrap, Reynolds wrap, and then my spatula and, and tongs there. So that works out really well there. And then underneath, you know, I had more storage space back here as well. So I've got a collapsible sink. And then I made a little holder for our plates so that they go in where the furnace used to be. And they, they rode the whole way there. They essentially get capped by the underside of the slider for the, the refrigerator. So that works out really well there. They don't bounce around, never come out. So that took care of my stove. We got the refrigerator now. And then I really wanted a silverware drawer to keep things organized, but I didn't want to give up the space that a silverware drawer would take because the drawer itself was going to have structure to it. So what I did was I wound up with this storage area and I made a silverware block similar to a knife block. And that was kind of a painstaking deal because all these little compartments are individual compartments. But I've got our forks, got spoons, got, got spurtles to stir with, got butter knives, got four steak knives here in a row stacked in individually. And then these were super handy. I better use these a half dozen times on the trip. They're a, um, a utility shear. So they slip in there. I uh, got a lighter, more spurtles, mixing spoons. And then these, I, I really wanted a chef's knife, but I didn't have room for a full size chef knife. So I found these GSI outdoor chef knives, which are kind of a, a cut down size, but they have worked really well, really like those. Um, so I've got the chef knife here, and then I've got, it's almost like a bread knife, I think. It's a, a serrated edge. I could use it to trim a tree if I had to, but. Uh, you know, that, that works really well for cutting breads. And then I've got a small paring knife as well that is a similar shape as the chef knife. Um, that, that was really a handy knife to have. So they fit in there really nice and they were just scaled perfectly for what I was looking for. So that block takes up hardly any room at all. And then it still leaves me all the room inside the storage area here for a couple of totes. So I got my pot holders here, got a tote with our coffee and our coffee maker and filters, and then some miscellaneous stuff down that other tote. And then I keep these gallon jugs in here of water that I use to cook with. Um, I still have the 24 gallon onboard water tank, but I moved the water pump to underneath the camper. So I don't have it taking up space in the galley. And then I put a false wall in to hide the ductwork back here in the back that comes up from underneath the camper for the Propex heater. A couple of screws that pops out if I ever need to access that. Um, I had to put a little cover on the side because the shore power lead comes in through the side. So I got a little boxed in area here that, that covers that up. But then all that goes behind that and it's all tucked in behind that false wall. And then, so that took care of that area. And then I really wanted like a dough board or a butcher block a cutting board to pull out. So I was able to weasel that in. But after I got it, it was so pretty that I hated to scar it up cutting on it. So I went out and I found a actual cutting board that I could just slip on top of it. So now I cut on top of this to save my wood cutting board. And then this just slips in a holder that I made here on the side, beside the refrigerator. And it rode the whole way there, never came out. Never, I don't think it ever moved, to be honest with you. So that worked out pretty nice there. But that gives me an, another surface area because you know, we start cooking a meal with you know, two or three different sides going on this area fills up really fast. So to have that into addition to that, 
that was really, really nice to have. And then it just slides back in. <coughs> Countertop, it's just a Menard special that I cut down to make fit. Uh, the backsplash, I don't know what I was thinking when I did this, but this is actual individual steel tiles. And they're 43 thousandths thick and a real pain to cut. Um, I bet I spent two hours getting these holes for my outlet and then a circular hole in that for a 12 volt power port that I've got just a USB charger in um, and a couple of power ports there for that. Um, that, was, that was just a total pain getting those holes cut in that, but it, I think it turned out really nice. And then I went in and put the shelf back because um, it just seemed to work out well to have the shelf there. And this top coming down, you know, you don't think about that arch until you start trying to lay something out like this. I was trying to make it as big as I could, but I was really kind of stuck. So I backed up and thought, how can I make the best use of the space? So I, I made a little, um, we got a spice rack up here with our 10 most used spices. Uh, they're labeled on top and I put them back in the same place every time so I know which ones they are. So we've got um, my Cindy side for cups here and I recessed them down into the shelf so that they don't bounce around and come out. So this is a 15 ounce coffee cup here. And then this is her small um, koozie for her drinks. And we got a 20 ounce double insulated cup here for, for her and, and similar deal on the other side for me. Um, went ahead and put the lights. I got three lights here that dim down, um, puck lights, RV puck lights underneath. And then over top, I've got a motion activated light that dims as well. Uh, which really worked nice. Uh, we were up there, I think I cooked most of the meals in, at night in the dark. Um, so to have that dim, you know, dimmable light there on a motion sensor, that was really nice. Went ahead and got a stainless steel paper towel holder. It's up over the stove, so it's out of the way. I don't, don't crack my head on that any at all. Um, the stove, I'm just tickled to death with this. You know, I've wanted it for so long and to finally be able to, to weasel it into a, to a teardrop like this and have it come out, that was just really nice how it worked out. Um, and the burners on this are uncommonly large. Most of these little camp stoves have like little two inch burners on them and get a real hot spot in your, in your skillet. Well, this is like almost four inches in diameter and does a real nice job of evenly hitting your skillet. Um, so we've got wings on the side here that pop out for the wind. I'm gonna go ahead and, and sew up some wings that go on the side out of a gray uh, indoor outdoor fabric that comes down. And on this side, I'm gonna bring them around so that it, it actually covers the back side to help keep the wind because that wind was blowing like 40 miles an hour one day and I couldn't turn the burner down very low without it going out. So I think if I put that wing back there between the wings on the stove and then this wing wall coming down off the top, that will really help take care of that. And then on the oven here, um, you know, it's looking pretty darn good in there. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> So to be able to bake at your campsite in a teardrop, I mean, that's just, just the ticket. I, I really get a kick out of that. So um, it's, it's pretty simple. You know, the, the Propex heater switching to that gave me back so much room in this galley to allow me to do everything from the stove over that I've done. Uh, between that and moving that water pump to underneath the camper, that just really opened up all sorts of possibilities with, with the layout on the, the stove. Um, I did have to, um, when the, the stove arrived, it had a, a regulator that came back off the backside and stuck out like four inches. And there was just, it, it took up so much room and I was losing so much space that I went ahead and made a special adapter here, uh, cut apart the old, the original brass adapter so I could get the threaded part and then soldered a quarter inch elbow onto it with a three eighths port on it. So that worked out really well. So I've got it tied off the under the bottom so this doesn't move. And then my service loop down there just recoils right back into the camper. I mean, just, I'm just tickled to death with how the, how the layout turned out. It works really well for, for what we use it for. And, you know, I think the muffins were pretty good when we had for breakfast. Delicious. And the business and gravy one morning. Great. Yeah, so that, it's just been a lot of fun. But, uh, it was a lot of work. It was like building a dollhouse at some points because there were just so many individual little pieces and I, I planed more wood down doing this thing than I've planed in the last two years. So um, I'm, I'm glad it's done. I'll, I'll say that, but uh, you know, I look forward to using it now. And uh, I know a lot of people have been looking forward to seeing it. So we just want to put this video out and let everybody take a look at what we wound up with. And you know, if we see you at a campground you know, in the near future, come over and take a look at it and we'll, we'll whip you up something to eat. So thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you on the next video.